Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone. We'll start with Kirtan. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I would encourage you to sing along with me. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय जगत गुरु शिला प्रभुपाद की जय कलयुग पावन हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की जय वंशा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता नाम पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय जगत गुरु शिला प्रभुपाद की जय नीताय गौर हरि प्रेमानंदी हरि हरि बोल नाउ विल चैंट सम प्रेयर्स टू इनवोक ऑस्पिशियसनेस बिफोर वी गेट स्टार्टेड ओम ज्ञानत मिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाखया चक्षुरोन्मीलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्य ददा स्वापदिक नमो ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामीनिनामिने 
नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणे जय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री वाश आदि गौर भक्त वृंद एवरी वन कैन रेज योर हैंड्स लाइक दिस हरे कृष्णा एंड चैंट अलॉन्ग विथ मी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघयते गिरिम यत्कृपातमहम वंदे श्री गुरु दीनता परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर हरि ओम तत्सत आनंद लीलामय विग्रहाय हेमा दिव्य छवि सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेम रस प्रदा चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नमस्ते हरे कृष्णा आई वेलकम एवरी वन ऑफ यू टू दिस वीकली सैटरडे सेशन एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग भगवद गीता एंड वाई आर वी डिस्कसिंग भगवद गीता बिकॉज वी आर ट्राइंग टू एवेकन आवर डॉर्मेंट कॉन्शियसनेस awareness okay. um let us start this session with a with a short story actually we all like to hear stories <laughs> as a kid i always like to hear stories and even as a grown up also we enjoy hearing stories then we can relate through these stories so this is uh there was at one point of time uh several several hundreds of years back like there was one person this is this is an allegorical story to be able to relate and in this story there is a sinful man who is an atheist okay he um like at the end of his life when he is about to die we have heard in the past that okay when when a person is about to die then the messengers of death who are called yamdutas the scriptures call them as yamdutas so the yamdutas were here to take him okay that when his soul is leaving his body at that time the yamdutas in this case they come with very colorful dresses they look like okay very colorful very nice fancy dresses and these persons come and ask him hello sir okay can you tell us where do you want to go do you want to go to hell or do you want to go to heaven and this person is an atheist he says are okay. uh, i don't know about this good karma and bad karma but i have never heard of any person getting a choice are these the genuine like um, legit ones like okay are these the duplicate ones or the legitimate ones so so they he asked them like are you the legit ones like are you the legit yamdutas so they said like no no yeah we are legitimate but you know like these days uh, you it's the election season <laughs> so there is a change in government there and you can check it out actually so Uh, but you can let us know what 
what would you like to take uh, what would you prefer to go to heaven or hell so he says like i don't know anything about hell or heaven so he says like okay if, in that case you can check out our youtube link if you uh, for hell there is a youtube link you can go there and you can check it out how it is and uh, for heaven if you want to check it out there is a brochure we can give you that brochure so this person says oh is it hell has a youtube link and um, heaven has the brochures uh, this hell looks to be more advanced like they are sophisticated like <laughs> but this heaven they are still in this paper printing this age old thing like they, they are not in matching up with the times like okay? so he goes ahead and sees like okay hey what is there in hell like okay? he checks out the youtube link and then he sees like okay oh everyone is dancing having fun there like okay <laughs> and then like they are having like okay they, they are eating meat having fun like okay there is all females males like okay so it's like he he gets all this advertisement and he says like okay hell looks like interesting actually and let me just check it out like okay what does uh, heaven have so in heaven like okay he goes and sees like okay oh uh, in the brochure he sees oh they are in some meditation pose like okay they are like sitting like this uh, and that's all he sees so he sees like okay, this uh, this heaven looks to be very boring actually these are like sitting in this one single pose like nothing <laughs> uh, there, there's not much they are doing there so he think he goes and tells this uh, this yamdutas i want to go to hell so they ask him are you sure sir yes sir uh, uh sir please uh, is that your final decision they said yes yes i want to go to i i want to go to hell so then they said okay just because uh, we just want to tell you the terms and conditions just so that you are aware okay if you were to go into heaven then uh, we have these staircases that goes to heaven and if you were to go to hell we have this elevator that goes then he thinks oh they are, uh, th these guys are so <laughs> technologically advanced S staircase <laughs> i mean it's for ages have not been through this staircase who will go through those so many staircases and just look at this hell <laughs> okay they have an elevator that right there so he says okay i have made up my mind i am going to hell okay then sir you can take this uh take this uh, uh elevators and then you can go and uh, then he gets into the elevator and uh, he's have there is a nice music going on he's just having a good time and then suddenly the do door opens you are in hell and the door opens and suddenly he sees that he's in the in a, a pond of or a water body of stool and urine and all the vomiting stuff so like, okay all these things and he says oh this is this is so yucky i what is this hello madam i am in the wrong place this is not this is not where i had signed up for then he said no no you are in the right place no no this i wanted to go to hell you are in hell then they said like no no but this is not what i saw in the youtube video I said oh sorry sir that is a problem with our marketing department that's not our thorala <laughs> so so with this we can see that how our mind in in a uh, how how our mind is strict through the material advertisements right we all try to see many times like okay we may be visiting a place or so we may see some picture but when we out, go out there we may see a different thing out there or we may see things what we saw in the picture that is part of it but then like okay in the overall thing when we observe things from a higher perspective or from a overview perspective we see that okay there is so much illusion in this world so this is how the mind tricks us so this mind can be very very uh can play a lot of tricks on us why are we studying this mind because when we want to study the consciousness we have to focus it is it is very very essential that we remain focused in our objective so with this 
I will come back to the mind, but I will take a verse from the Bhagavad Gita where we had stopped like two sessions back and then we took a slight diversion to understand some fundamentals. We will continue to understand the fundamentals, but let me go ahead and share this particular verse. This is the 13th verse from the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. We are in Bhagavad Gita where Arjun is, he, he is in the battlefield. This battlefield has been, has been so constructed. Like, okay, it is between two parties. Both of them are from the same family. It's a set of cousins. On one side, it is the Kauravas who are very envious and and on the other side, we have the Pandavas who are very virtuous. On the side of Pandavas, their army strength is much, much less. It's almost half of the Kauravas. But on the side of the Pandavas, we have Krishna. And how did Krishna come on that side? Because both of them were given a choice. Do you want 900,000 army persons who have never lost a battle? Or do you want Krishna? Krishna is giving this choice. Do you want Krishna who will not even fight? Arjun was given the first choice. Arjun is from the Pandavas. Arjun was given the first choice. And Arjun makes decision that Krishna, I want you. Duryodhan, who is the envious person, who always gets into trouble because of his activities, he makes the choice that okay, he wants those 900,000 army persons and he's very happy to get those. But as they are assembled in the battle field of Kurukshetra, at that time Arjuna is very bewildered. He does not want to fight because he sees his family members on the other side. Initially he gives reasons. In the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Arjun is giving reasons why he should not fight the battle. And he gives five reasons for this. I'm not going into the details of these reasons, but I wanted to cover this summary so that like we all can understand what is the context here going on. So till Arjun is giving excuses of why he will not be fighting or Arjun is giving reasons of why he will not be fighting, Krishna does not open his mouth. Then Arjun comes to a point where he says that, oh, oh Krishna, he considers Krishna as his friend initially, but then he surrenders unto Krishna and says that, Krishna, please consider me as your disciple from now on. You be my guru. You guide me. Okay. So, it is because of my miserly weakness that I am completely bewildered. I want you to guide me. And at that point of time, Krishna starts guiding him. So Krishna gives a very important example. In life, we come across many people. We give them free advices. Okay, but these free advices do not seem to work out because they are whomever we are giving these free advices, they are not interested in taking advices. So it is very, very important to give our advices also in the right place when it is required. If it is not required, then we should not give advices. Otherwise, they will not be accepted. Many times we see, right, like we, we also tend to give advices, but then those are not being heard. When one person is ready for it, then you can give them advice. When one person is seeking for it, then you can give them advice. Till one person is seeking, because if someone is already full, if you give them more food, then in that case, they will not be able to have food. And that food will not be digested either, even if they have it. And when one person is hungry, at that point of time, if you give them food, then that food, they'll be able to appreciate, they'll be able to have it because they have that hunger and they'll be able to digest it as well. So we are talking about the hunger just like food, we are talking about the hunger of the heart. If someone has the hunger of the heart, of the soul calling, then Bhagavad Gita is the most appropriate message for them. So coming to this particular verse, this is the 13th verse from Bhagavad Gita. Krishna first of all establishes what is the real identity of a person. 
we identify ourselves with the body but krishna says that okay we are not this body we are spirit soul how do we understand this so i can say that this is my eyes right this these are my eyes am i the eyes if the eyes are only there if i am separate from the eyes if the eyes are brought out from the body can i say that this is this is me this eyes pointing at the eyes that this is me i can't tell that okay that mean i am not the eyes these eyes belong to me but i am not this eyes this is my hand but am i this hand no if this hand is disconnected from my body i can't say that is me okay so i am not this hand this is my hand but i am not this hand similarly this is my head but i am not this head if this head is disconnected from my body i can't say that is me so similarly now this is not even my body actually this is my cell phone i am saying this is my cell phone but am i this cell phone no i am not this cell phone i this cell phone belongs to me but i am not this cell phone if that is the case then who am i i am the living force i am that force because of which i am that force who is experiencing everything but i am not this body i am a, the spiritual spark within me okay i am the spirit soul now look at just do this exercise i, I want you to realize this uh, realize this thank you michael thank you for sharing that now do this exercise at home like when you are there just look at your childhood pictures as you are as you have the as you have your own pictures as you have grown up through this from childhood to now or maybe you can look for last few years of pictures you will see that so many things within your body has changed right but think about it you are that same person but your body has changed that means you are not this body the body is constantly going change every every moment so every moment the body is constantly the hairs are getting grayed out okay the bodily functions are like when you are growing from a childhood to an adult the bodily functions are increasing when you have reached a middle age there is a steady state and then they start deteriorating you will see that bodily functions are deteriorating but you are the same person within that and that tells us that we are not this body and krishna further tells that this verse dehi nosmin yatha dehe kaumaram yovanam jara tatha dehantara praptir dhiras tatrana mohyati so before i go to the translation of this verse i want to mention one thing why are we reading from bhagavad gita because bhagavad gita is not a sectarian book what is bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is a manual for the human life bhagavad gita is just like we get a washing machine or a refrigerator at home any appliance we get tv or something we get along with that a manual how to operate this bhagavad gita is exactly that it is a manual on how we should operate our body it is especially meant for human beings those who are in the human form of life because if we call any animal a dog or so let's come and hear bhagavad gita they will not be able to understand anything they will not be able to appreciate anything they may understand but they may not be able to do anything sometimes like there are there are some souls like we'll come to that later but like there are some souls who were in human form earlier but they have been degraded to an animal form so this bhagavad gita tells what is the purpose of our life how can we achieve the best out of our life and why are we talking about this because see if you have to go to a certain if you have to go to a certain place then these days what do we use we use a gps we first put our destination address okay that is where we are going 
And then what happens when we say start, it shows us how we will go there. First is where is put in and then, then it shows us the uh, how we will reach there. So, so this, this Bhagavad Gita that is spoken by Krishna to Arjuna, where Arjuna is getting all the guidance from Krishna, has been spoken about 5,000 years back. And that same message has been descending through the disciplic succession right from Krishna personally. Like As he is telling it to Arjuna, that same message has been descending forward. And in that disciplic succession, our Srila Prabhupada, our ISKCON's founder Acharya, Jagatguru Srila Prabhupada, he has shared this. What he did is, he translated this Bhagavad Gita, which is in Sanskrit language, to word by word, he has given that translation. If you see here, he has given the word by word translation. And then he gave the overall translation. And purport means in what context has things been spoken. So, ev everything has been made in a very easily understandable language so that we all can become more aware. That is the whole purpose of this Bhagavad Gita so that we can understand what is our purpose. So let us read this translation. Translation is by Srila Prabhupada. Jagadguru Srila Prabhupada ki jai. As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body as death, at death. So as the as the soul, we talked about like taking pictures and then seeing from our childhood how this body is changing, right? So as the body has been changing right from the childhood, then what happens at the death? Similarly, that soul which has been passing through multiple bodies during our this lifetime, at, at death what will happen is this soul will change its body at death. And a sober person is not bewildered by such a change. The sober person is called here as dhira. One who understands this, okay, and one who is sober in nature, that person is not bewildered by such a change. So, we earlier we discussed upon an example of a person, uh, a, a person who is changing his dress, right? Like, okay, I still remember we I asked this question, like, okay. If we get a new dress, if we have to change our dress, do we become happy or we become sad? We generally become happy by getting a new dress. So, when someone gets, when someone's this body stops functioning, okay, it is deteriorating, it stops functioning for whatsoever reason, at, at that point of time, they are given a new dress. It is a chance to be happy. Okay, and how could we, 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 we be happy? Why does someone become very anxious about death? Because they do not know what is there next. If someone follows the Bhagavad Gita, then I have personally seen devotees who are very joyful at the time of death. They are willing to embrace death because they know where they are headed towards. This is the difference. So, we have fear about unknowns and the greatest fear in the life of a person is death and when we are able to understand with knowledge and then applying that knowledge then we we get cleansed from our those conditionings and then we are able to become fearless at the time of death so now having spoken that there is this, it says a sober person is not bewildered by such a change. So we, I want to pick this aspect actually, a sober person who is not disturbed by such change. So which means that, uh, can I ask this question? Okay, for being sober, what thing, what are we talking about? What is this that sober thing? Okay. Can anyone say that? What aspect are we talking about? What do you, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? 
Does anyone wants to unmute and say? Consciousness. Consciousness. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Michael. Anyone else wants to say like, okay, what are we talking about sober person? Whom do we call as a sober? Oh, this person is very sober. What are we talking about here? What do you think? Yes, Lalu Kapu. You can unmute and say. You have to unmute. The person who knows his real identity, that that he is not the body, he is the soul. So hmm. death is for the body, but not for the soul. So, so uh, 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 he does not lament at the death. Uh, hmm. That person is so what? Yes. So he does not lament at the time of death, but in at the time of death or at the time of any situation where there is unknown things happening, what is it that gets disturbed? Mind. Mind. Yes. Mind. I, this is exactly what I was looking at, that mind. So mind is very, very important. And I wanted to pick this thing up. So I want you to take you to a real incident. Please hear this very, very carefully because this may provoke some thoughts within you. This is a real incident. This has happened in Germany. His Holiness, uh, this is um, this is a friend of uh, sorry, this is His Holiness Sachinandan Swami Maharaja's father, his friend's his friend's story. He used to work in the railways in Germany, and uh, in Germany, as he was working in the railways. In those railways, they have this cold storage areas um, in the trains. So one day while he was, he this person was an engineer by nature. And one day while he was working on that, suddenly it so happened that the door got closed from outside. So when the door got closed, okay, he went ahead and he banged the door. Hello, open the door. Open, 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 open. No one could hear it. It was a cold storage area. So this person, being an engineer, he knew that if one person is stuck inside in a cold storage, uh, it's a frozen place. So they cannot survive for more than seven hours. Seven hours is the maximum they can survive. So he kept banging, please open the door. Duck, 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 duck. Okay, nothing was happening and his anxiety was growing. So somehow no one could hear him. And then what happened? The next morning when they came and opened the door, they found that he has died. Okay. So, but the surprising thing was, but the most interesting thing, twist in this story is in that locality, there was no electric power for the last 36 hours. So what does that mean? That means that the storage area was not frozen. It was not cold. So how did this person die? Anyone, any guesses? How did this person die? It is, it is by thinking that he was knowing that yeah. if he cannot come out, he will die. So yes. whether it is cold or not cold, he has not seen that. Oh, mind may, his mind is set up that he has to die uh, after seven hours. And even though he, he was uh, not cold, he was dead. He was pretty he thought that he was dead. Right. Yes. Nandini Priya Mataji, right. Uh, in fear, yeah. I want to hear from Michael. Yeah, Mohan, right. What do you think, Michael? 
you want to share something oh i'm sorry yeah, the same that he he i had already heard the story before so i knew the answer he knew he was going to die so he let himself die right right so he he it was his mind that took over now i want you to hear this next story okay this please hear this very carefully because this also may put us in a thought provoking mode this is a story from the upanishads very ancient texts so it says that there was one sadhu a a a, a saint a mendicant who was meditating on the banks of a river and he was just chanting om and as he was doing that a a snake came from distance and he bit this sadhu as he opened his eyes in a moment he could not see the snake but he saw a mouse going there and then he was like okay that's fine let's continue om nothing happened he continued like this few days passed and then this this was a i wanted to mention this was a poisonous snake few days passed and after that he was again chanting om and this time a mouse comes by bites the sadhu and then the sadhu after some time he opens his eyes he could not see the mouse but then he sees a snake at a distance he's like oh and then in few moments the sadhu dies i hope you heard this the sadhu dies from mouse bite what what was the real reason for the sadhu to die anyone any thoughts you can unmute and share yes the the uh, saint mind was on the uh, uh, snake bite so whether the snake has actually bite him or not when he saw the snake at a distance his mind has captured that and uh, and he died in that yes he is bitten by the snake yes that means only the mind is the cause of his death his his mind was was the cause of his death right yeah michael thank you yes psychosomatic reaction so now this is from the upanishads so i will now share one very real life incident i know one of my uh one of the acquaintances of my uh, relative had shared this about a person that they know so many times like you know like when um, when this uh, when the students go to the colleges in many of the colleges they have like okay uh, the youngsters they do something that is called as ragging ragging is a event which happens where the where the senior students they try to um they try to have some fun with the junior students who have just now got into college or the first year students so in one such incident there this is a real incident it happened like okay, in uh, less than uh, 15 years within last 15 years so 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 in one such incident like okay, they called this first year student and they fed him very nicely okay and this whoever this student was he was a meat eater so they gave him some meat and like okay, he had like okay, some meat and everything and after he has had the food they asked this boy 
so how was it he said it i really loved it it was really nicely cooked thank you for feeding me this that and then they asked him do you know what you ate so he said like what was it um he gave like okay maybe chicken or something like that i don't know but then they said like okay it was the meat of a snake okay so this person was so much traumatized by that that in uh, in couple of hours he started to vomit blood and he passed away there itself so it i think this caught a lot of attention like okay with the colleges and everything many things happened later but the point i'm trying to make is that the mind is um the mind can have such a such an influence on on each and every one of us so we have to be very very um careful in how we are dealing with the mind i want to share something very interesting that since i mentioned that krishna is saying here uh, give me one moment i'll go ahead and share this so krishna is revealing to arjun okay we are telling that okay this is the human manual okay so krishna where is that so krishna is telling arjuna uh, when when both of them are talking that time arjuna who is a warrior he reveals to krishna what does he says chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavadridham tasyaham nigraham manne vayoriva sudushkaram now i want to tell you about this arjuna this arjuna is a is not just a famous warrior he is a world class warrior he defeated the entire army of the kauravas single handedly before the war once he had already done that that same arjuna also defeated demigods like lord shiva he defeated demigods like lord indra them single handedly that arjun is telling is defining the nature of this mind is telling chanchalam chanchalam means the mind is restless always like okay mind is like one moment it is here next moment it is there we are doing one activity but it will think about the next activity it will think about oh why did they tell me that previous activity okay chanchalam hi mana krishna my mind is very restless krishna pramathi pramath means it is mad mind is mad and see kids are also mad like sometimes kids too like okay very strange thing they are crazy or they do so it's is it like a loving child no 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 it is balavad see balavad means here balavad means it is strong as an elephant it is very strong okay and it is dridham dridham means it is it is very um here it uses the word obstinate but i want to use the word like uh, uh if it wants to do something it is very determined it will take us into that route tasya ham nigraham manne and krishna what can i tell you like i have the power to control the cyclone the winds i can do that does any of us have the power to control wind here 
cyclone nowadays like we are hearing about the hurricanes in florida no one is able to do anything but arjun has the power to control the wind cyclone also that arjun is saying that okay i can do that but i am not able to control my mind just for a moment think about it like one who can control the wind cyclone that person is telling that okay mind is my mind is rest, restless i am not able to control my mind then just think about what is our position what is our position absolutely nothing we are insignificant we cannot control can anyone control wind hurricane tornadoes even some air let's we cannot so arjun is saying i am i am not able to control it so our position is we are we are at a far lower place just think about it like if we think that okay i want to do this when we are trying to focus ourselves our mind will take us in and different direction is there anyone like who can control your mind for 5 minutes i want to ask this 5 minutes we can control our mind okay thank you nandini pramal ji how about others is there anyone who can say that okay i can control my mind <laughs> okay so but how many of you really want to control the mind let me put it this way who are really desiring that okay i i really want to control my mind i wish like my mind was more controlled okay then i could be more focused at whatever i am doing it could be for any activity that i am desiring to do i want to be more focused in doing and the only thing that i see constantly that is troubling is my mind because it takes me away from what i am doing i am not able to stay focused in my activities because my mind is constantly dragging me here and there and i am losing focus i wish i could be more focused so that like okay i in little time i could achieve so much actually because these are the characteristics that the mind takes us see even if you look at it like okay if we are in a if we are trying to attend even this session sometimes our mind will be taking us here and there in fact many times okay we may be physically here but our mind will take us to a number of places oh let me take this take care of this and then i will <laughs> right it is constant like okay this mind is constant trying to do that so how do we control this mind if arjun could not control it then it is not for us to actually go ahead and control it but we can how we cannot do it but krishna can do it and how do we do this see we have to have a very very simple formula a b c and d a is association c association means whom do we associate with associate does not mean okay who are our pals i mean who where are we trying to whom are we getting influenced by where are we hearing from okay so we could be in a session trying to get association but within that session what is more important is at the end of the session are we trying to assess what is our take away what is our take away message from this what are in a, like like with this weekly sessions like okay if we are think that okay okay from this session today i learned this i want to apply this in my life if we have that objective that means coming in the sessions like okay to get a transformation 
I want to know about like, okay, my consciousness. I want to purify my consciousness. I want to purify my existence. Let me hear very attentively with rapt attention. What is it that I can take from this to purify my existence? This is key. That is, then that association will have a lot of effect. And where do we take association from? We should take association from the bona fide source. So let's say, okay, if there is an alcoholic, the alcoholic will, I mean, no one becomes an alcoholic on their own. If we go back and check, okay, they were in association of alcoholic. That's how they became an alcoholic. A thief, one fine day will not become a thief. The thief has been in the association of thieves. That's how he turned into, or thief or thieves. That's how it is. It's like this. Like, okay, that's how this thief got the ideas of how I can steal. <laughs> So, so that that is that is what is association. Okay, I see. Michael has a point. I am the awareness of my newer mind, uh, in my mind consciousness, <laughs> which is not the same as my. Uh, yes, right. So, what Michael is saying, in short, is like okay, he's seeing the changes that is coming through him, and he's. He's identifying what is changing in his consciousness within his mind. So if, if we give, if we are very determined that, okay, I really want to purify my existence, then this A is association. Wh whose association are we taking? B rule is books. Reading from books. And what is the, what are the books that we can read from? See, this this book is very, very key. Um, I don't know why it's... Uh, this is the Bhagavad Gita. And, and I can tell you about one book that I have been reading very recently. It's, it's called Beyond Birth and Death. And Beyond Birth and Death is a fantastic book. Uh, it is just, it is less than 100 pages. It is, I think, less than 50 pages also very short book but it talks about it goes into the core of consciousness and there are so many examples that are that are shared within this book i am so amazed it's a book by shila Prabhupada, and it's uh, you can find it in any of these con centers so i would really encourage you to read this particular book so we talked about a and b the c c is chanting what is this chanting for? This chanting is the medicine for cleansing our, our consciousness. It is the medicine of this age. Arjun feels that okay, he cannot control the mind. What is our hope? We cannot control our mind. But when, when we chant, we are trying to invoke Krishna, okay, the energy of the Supreme Lord. And we are trying to give him the position in our heart that oh krishna you be the controller we are chanting the mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare what is the meaning of this mantra the meaning of this mantra is there are three words here hare krishna and ram hare is the energy of the lord krishna is the lord himself O oh, oh Lord and O oh energy of the Lord and Ram means the pleasure potency. That O oh Lord, please, please engage me in your service. That means we want to be an instrument of the Lord. Okay. By distributing his compassion, by distributing his love to everyone around. When we become when we try to become instruments of the lord how can we do that more effectively when we are ourselves pure think about it like okay now we have nandini priya mataji here so if nandini priya mataji if a friend of yours comes to your house someone you love very dear most okay and they are at your house you have cooked something you have cooked a very nice biryani for them okay 
and you want to offer it to them, can you give them in a plate in which you have already eaten and all your remnants are out there? Can you give them in that particular plate? What do you think? You can unmute and say. No, no, Prabhuji. No, right? You, you cannot give it. How about, how about Michael? Do you think you can give that? Can you ask ask the question again, please? The question is: Let's say if your most dear most friend has come to your place, and you have cooked a very nice dish, like something that you really want to offer this. Let's say a burger. You made made it for them. Now, when they are there at your place, when you want to give it to them, can you give them in a plate which is not washed, which is which has your past eaten remnants are out there lying there? Can you put that burger in that same plate and give it to them? Never would I serve anybody a burger. Okay, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> the, an uh, the answer is no. No, right? So why is it that, okay, we can't serve it? Because we want to give them in a clean, in a pure place. Now think about it. This creation, okay, and we have had some sessions where we talked about what is Krishna's role in this creation? Why is this Krishna? It is that same. We know God by different names. Someone calls like Allah. Someone calls like okay, someone may call him by Jehovah. Someone may call him by Jesus. Okay, but how are we like when we are trying to offer him something? How can we offer ourselves? when we are not clean internally and externally. So when we are, how can we become clean? We can become clean by chanting this name. What happens when we chant? See, think about it. There is one beautiful example that I, that I heard. It really struck me. So we have sunlight. We are standing right next to the sunlight. Okay. But let's say if when the sunlight is, we are we are out in the sun and the sunlight is out there at that time when we are very close to this. Now I am just trying to take this. So uh, this is a kartal. But let's say these were two coins. Okay. But if I put this in front of my eyes and look towards the sun, what will I see? Will I see the bright sunlight or will I see something different? What do you think, Lalu Gaku? What will I see? No, we will see something different. Yeah. We, and, we will see the, yeah. We will see that coin and the sunlight is sunlight is surrounding the coin. Yeah. So if sunlight is surrounding the coin, what will it look for us actually? Will we have darkness or will we have light? And darkness. We'll have darkness. So our soul is also in the same position. Our soul is very pure. But somehow or other, through millions of lifetimes, okay, this has been coated with all the different type of conditionings which has been out there. And now what is happening is, when we are trying to look at Krishna, we have not built any relationship with him. For lifetime after lifetime, Krishna is saying that, okay, that aham bija prajapita, I am the seed-giving father in every living entity. He does not say that okay, I am the seed-giving father of human beings. I am the seed-giving father of each and every living entity. And if we are trying to establish our relationship with Krishna, then our life is successful. And so before chanting, if we just pray that, okay, oh Krishna, please, I have rejected you for so many lifetimes. Even in, when I was in the body of a pig, at that time you were there. When I was in the body of a rat, you were there. I was in the body of a mouse uh, or whatever, ant, you were there. I was in, I am now in this human body, you are there. For millions and billions of bodies that I have changed, that same soul has been changing the bodies, but you have still been there with me. But now, oh Krishna, I understand that you are so kind, so merciful. You, you... You will please help me so that I can purify my existence. I now want to serve you. Just say this. 
and start chanting like okay you will see the difference oh krishna please don't turn me away just like i turned you away for so many lifetimes please don't turn me away i want to give the best so far in all my lifetimes i have been asking things from you why am i not getting this why am i not getting that why am i not getting this but now i want to offer myself to you i cannot what can i give you i cannot give you anything but i want to give myself to you please accept me with my words with my thoughts with my actions with my body i completely want to surrender unto you please accept me i want to please allow me to be to serve you with love and please be pleased with this services when we offer ourselves in this way then krishna becomes pleased then we can chant the holy name so think of a so um and the last thing is diet okay d for diet so we talked of for a for association b for books c for chanting and d for diet this diet is a very important thing what we are having in our diet strongly influences our mind okay if we just have anything and everything then in that case although we may be chanting okay the chanting will have its effect but the effect it will have a slower effect the diet is it is in 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 an indian language hindi it is said jaisa khaoge anna waisa rahega man means whatever you have in your food exactly same way your mind will behave and yeah. give one quick example for that this is this is a true story le okay there was one one uh, mendicant he and his disciple uh, went to a went to a village in india so this mendicant uh, it suddenly started raining and uh, it was the rainy season so one of the very poor lady from that village she requested that okay why don't you come and have lunch at my place and uh, this mendicant accepted he and his disciple they went there so they she had called them to come like the in the morning she told this them uh, to come and then like okay in the afternoon they went to her place so they saw that this although this lady was so poor she cooked like okay so many items like okay and uh, this mendicant was thinking like okay oh she took so much effort like to cook like so many items and they had they sumptuously fed like uh, they were sumptuously fed and then this mendicant and this um his disciple they left from there so this mendicant was a pure devotee of the lord so as they were traveling at that time this mendicant he asked his disciple i think that there is something wrong actually are are we carrying something that we are not supposed to carry so his disciple says um i am sorry uh, guru maharaj but uh, i guru maharaj means like he is addressing him as a spiritual master but i actually there were two silver spoons with which they they gave uh, food to us so i stole those two silver spoons so he said what you stole silver spoons come with me right now so they went ahead and went back to that place and uh, he said immediately return it so return it and uh, then th- this since this mendicant was a pure devotee he told this lady i want to know that you are so you don't uh, you look to be so poor 
how did you manage to cook so many items and from where did you get this silver spoon please tell me this very very truthfully and clearly so this this lady she got very scared and she revealed the truth she said that okay i am sorry oh oh sir i want to tell you the truth i have stolen these i wanted to please you so as a result of that i went ahead and stole this spoons and i went ahead and got all these grocery items by stealing them so that i can feed you so what happened is when she made all these things right like okay at that time in her consciousness that stealing thing was going on and when it was cooked when it was offered then this people also got the stealing mentality now since it was a pure devotee the pure devotee could digest that but his disciple couldn't so so you can see how how this consciousness travels this is very very important if so how can we purify our consciousness with diet we should offer anything that we eat to krishna okay when we are cooking we should offer that to krishna first by offering it to krishna that same food becomes surcharged with spiritual mercy it uplifts our consciousness and we should pray to krishna while offering that oh krishna i am very fallen but i have brought this out of love for you please accept it and we should chant three times hare krishna maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare three times we should chant and then we should just like if we were to eat for 10 minutes we should give krishna 10 minutes time be away from that that place or cover that area have krishna eat and that's it that becomes prasad so that can purify uplift our consciousness so so we talked about a b c and d a is association b is books c is chanting and d is diet by this we can uplift our consciousness so with that i think we are at 1216 right now uh it was slightly it went slightly above the time so i would stop it here if anyone has any questions or any comments we can take it here hare krishna jagat guru shila prabhupad ki jai shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai okay i see uh, michael has already asked a question i think uh, hare krishna vatsal prabhu <laughs> hare krishna prabhu hare krishna very nice mm-hmm. class as always thank you can you repeat the a to d a for a for association what was that that was a, a very for, nice quote a for association b for books c for chanting chanting and d, d for diet is yes. these right. four things really protect us actually and they uplift our yes. consciousness thank you very much prabhu hare krishna thank you so i see michael has asked a question when people ask for things from krishna instead of asking what they can give to krishna is this because they don't understand their consciousness whose job is to feed the aware experience back to krishna uh uh so and i see michael you have the second question also i want to clarify the first question to make sure i understand it right for a b c d first is a is association michael association that is whose association are we seeking who is we have to constantly see that okay when we are in good association that means good circle of friends okay when we are in saintly association we start developing saintly thoughts see think about it anyone who is a businessman right they have come in contact with some businessman that's how that desire got comes to comes to their mind if there is a thief they have got that robbery idea because it was implanted by another thief who is in their circle so similarly if we get saintly association that way we will have our thoughts will be uplifted our consciousness will be uplifted books chanting and diet is correct i want to clarify that first question if you can just uh, unmute and if you can ask that then that will be helpful michael 
Thank you. Thank you. This is a wonderful presentation. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna to everybody. Hare Krishna. Uh, All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, when people ask for things from Krishna or from God, instead of asking what they can give to Krishna or God, is this because they don't understand that they are consciousness? They are a, a God, so God is in them, Krishna is in them, and our job is to feed back this aware human experience back to Krishna? Very nice question, Michael. Hare Krishna. Yes, it is true that there are, there are two types of people there are some people who are not aware that they are this consciousness. Krishna says that uh, all this Aham Bija Prajapita, that all living beings, you are all a plenary part. This spiritual spark that we have is a plenary part and parcel of Krishna. We are all part and parcel of Krishna. So, the duty of the part is to serve the whole. Just like if there is a machine, okay, and that machine has been assembled with a screw, okay, that screw in itself is useless. It does not have a role in it. Okay, but when that screw is fitted to that machine, then what happens is, it is participating in that whole. It is serving that whole. Similarly, like if you see, like um, in this, I was giving the example of this hand, right? This hand, if it is cut down, then it is useless. But now that it is joined with the body, it is joined with the connected with the whole, it has a function now. Okay, I can lift something up. And now, if my if my brain is if my brain is thinking that okay, oh, you go ahead and lift this, then in that case, it is doing the right. It is following the instructions of like the whole and it is doing that same activity. But sometimes you will see like okay, there are there are softwares, okay, which is supposed to work in some way, but there is a virus in the computer. So what happens? You might take your mouse in this direction, but the mouse is going on other direction. Why? <laughs> because it is infected with virus. So similarly, if as living entities, we have to understand that. Sometimes we are also corrupted with virus. Not sometimes, but most of the times we are corrupted with virus. And because of that contamination, we have a tendency, we don't want to follow anything. We want to be independent. We want to enjoy life. And that enjoyment, in that enjoyment, Krishna is not in the center. When we try to keep Krishna in the center, amidst our enjoyment, Okay, we are thinking that, okay, how can I serve in this situation? Okay, I want to enjoy something. Let's say I want to enjoy food, but let me offer this food to Krishna and then have it. Then, then what happens? That enjoyment, I want to watch a movie. Okay, let me watch a movie about Krishna, about Krishna's devotees, what, what they have done. Okay, that way what happens is I am watching a movie, but I am watching something that will uplift my consciousness. I want to have a nice, I am thinking of having a nice juice, okay, or ha I want to have a drink, but instead of having an alcoholic drink, which Krishna doesn't accept, let me try to make a, um, let me try to make a lassi, or let me try to make a lemon juice, or let me try to make a mocktail and offer it to Krishna. Krishna, I really love this juice, uh, love this mocktail, why don't you have it? And then I can enjoy your remnants. So when we are thinking of, in every situation, when we are thinking of how we can serve, that really changes the dynamics. I will give you one example, Mike, Michael. This With this example, it might become very clear. So let's consider, I will tell you about from my college days. Okay, so it becomes very relatable. So in the college, let's think about there are few types of students. So one, one, 
one student like uh, one type of student is like okay you, you know they come from a family okay and you will see they are always cursing their parents oh my dad is just like this he's he he never uh, takes care of me he has never done this he has never done that like okay my parents were like this always trying to curse their parents okay always bad mouthing them another category is there who would always uh, who may not contact their parents at any point of time but let's say there is a situation where they are in the need of money at that time they will call up their parents and say dad i need 1000 bucks can you please send it to me okay once in a once in a while once in a month or once in few weeks or once in few months they will call up okay even when they pass out like okay from their college same mentality will continue in their lifetime whenever they are in need they will call up okay it it may not be applicable just to parents also it may be to other relations also but i am telling this as parents where so you can understand it there is a third category what this third category does is they will they will be connected to their parents they will call up regularly they will check like okay how are things going uh, is there anything i could do for you okay so they are they are always talking about this now in these three th in these three types of students that you have seen i want to give you a scenario let's say there is a scenario that each of these category okay let's say these three students right they are in a sudden need of 10000 okay and when they are in that need at that time the first one says like okay oh i know my dad is like useless he will never give that and he does not even call this time the second category just in his known pattern he will call up like even if it has been 6 months like dad it's been so long talking to you can you give me 10000 dollars i need it right now i am in an urgency can you please give it to me and the third category student like he also calls up the dad and he says okay how are you doing just like every day he calls up like, how are you doing is there anything i can do for you he does not even mention anything about 10000 dollars now let's say michael in this case if you are in that parents position i want to ask this question to everyone actually if you are in that parents position and let's say the parent only the father only has 10000 dollars to give if we gets to know what situation each of his sons are if they are the sons by just for the sake of this hypothetical example if say they are the sons of the same father then whom will the father give the money first second or third okay yes ashok kishor charan prabhu i got your answer thank you what do you think michael says third anyone else mohan says third okay okay nandini priya mata ji also says third lalu kaku what about you and what about you vatsal prabhu prabhu i think a father loves each child equally and uh, and then based on necessity the father might decide or divide equally regardless of how many times they call yes true but the father only has but the father has a limitation of 10000 dollars he only has that much so whom whom will he give that see the third one has not even asked him the first one the first one did not ask he blasphemed the father third one did not ask him he talked about how he can serve the father and the second one here is telling he he just calls up at his time of need and he's telling that okay who oh, that father please give me 10000 dollars if you are that father let's say vatsal prabhu whom what does your heart say prabhu my my heart says to divide equally among the three <laughs> <laughs> okay okay ma 
okay michael says that okay who my editor mind okay michael said third and then he says or the one who so michael in in this case let's say all of them need it they need it most urgently then what do you say and lalu kok what is your opinion unmute Yes. I have to first examine that whether their need is genuine or not. Consider yes. that they are genuine. Consider that they are all, they they are all genuinely needed. See, it is it is required for that same purpose in their college. Okay, and their hmm. their need are equally genuine. But you have you can only serve one of these. Like, okay, even if you. Okay, Michael. Michael has changed his answer. He said, "Okay, if all of them are genuine, then we give it to the nicest one. And who is the nicest one in this case?" <laughs> third one. Third one. Okay, Lalu Koko is saying third one. Okay, Michael is also saying third one. So, what's the in in this case? So, all of them need that amount. Like, okay, to do it and. most people that i have asked this question they have all come and asked this third one in this case just replace the story uh just replace the father in the story with the supreme father krishna think about this like okay the first person who was very blasphemous to the father that person is the atheist okay who does not believe in god the second person who was coming at the time of need is michael in your example is are those people who come back to krishna or to god to ask them that okay what they need they only come with their own selfish demands at their times of need and the third one is the one who has the mood of service that person is never coming for any need if even if the father would have not given a single penny to that person that person would have still been happy only but the father out of his love knowing that the third person's love for him is genuine out of service in most cases i have heard and the like the the father would turn to that person father is equally compassionate to all the as watsal was saying is equally compassionate but what are the see given their past background like okay seeing that okay one person is reaching out for money only okay only when they need something after that they don't know the father because i have seen many people i i have personally seen many families where like okay they reach out to their parents like okay just to get some signature actually <laughs> when the when the parents are old i have seen one family i have seen that okay when they got their last signature okay house everything are given then the mother goes to the the mother has signed everything the mother is sent to a very poor facility old age home and or the mother is is in a terrible condition so so michael yes you have a valid question that okay if in if number 3 does not tell that he needs money how will i know we may not know as individual person but the supreme father will know that and that is how the supreme father orchestrates he knows everything that is going on in desire in our hearts the desires that has not manifested in our hearts he knows that even whatever is going on in the heart of a mosquito he knows that that is the nature of the supreme father so it is because of our selfish desires that okay we are we are not willing to serve and we are just focusing on what will make us happy without thinking of our supreme father the father doesn't need anything but when we serve him we only become happy so just like okay think about the scenario like okay if we have ordered for a pizza i may have stolen few dollars from my father's pocket and i ordered for a pizza 
Now that pizza comes, I eat it alone. This is one scenario. The other scenario is <laughs> when the pizza boy comes and delivers. At that time, I call my father and say, okay, actually I stole some, I took some amount from your pocket and I ordered a pizza. Can we both have it together? <laughs> the father will smile and say, okay, he has ordered a pizza, but he has ordered for us. Okay. It would, it, it, it when we are thinking of that Supreme Father in this way, then it it becomes a very easy, relatable thing where we can please him every moment. Does that answer your question, Michael? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone have any other questions or any comments or any feedback? Prabhu, this is a very philosophical conversation. So thank you for sharing the thoughts. I have, you know, just think like you remember you you have always said about mercy is something that you don't that what you don't deserve, right? And so what everybody gets is generally the karma. And then what Krishna gives us is mercy. Like how how is this story different in that context? Like, for example, an atheist will get what they deserve, right? In Bhagavad Gita also it is written, like, people will keep suffering, but if you want to truly escape birth and death, uh, you have to you have to become a full devotee and so on. So, like, what Krishna gives us is mercy, but what we get is, is based on our karma, and our job is to get rid of this karma, right? Hmm. So, you know, when, when I was answering, I was thinking from the the factor that, you know, as a father, as a seed-giving father, you love all your children equally, and you understand that the reason they are is because of their karma. And our job is to help them become a better individual rather than you know, deciding who is good, who is bad, because they are all that way because of something, right? And so that's what is 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 God doing in His unlimited mercy, right? And so... Just curious from that perspective, how does the answer, you know? No, it's a very good question. It's a fantastic question. So, so here is the thing, Leoke. What happens is, we are all bound to the laws of karma. And what is karma, Leoke? In short, it is, Leoke, if you do good work, then you you get good results. If you don't do good work, then you get bad results. Okay, but but what happens is, like, okay, whether we do good or we do bad, see this, this is the very, this is where Bhagavad Gita takes, I mean, when I heard this for the first time, I was like, okay, what? This is where Bhagavad Gita says, okay, whether you do good or you do bad, for both, both are equally bad. So, one who takes on to Krishna consciousness, that person is doing neither good nor bad. How does that happen? Because one who takes on to Krishna consciousness, that person it is called karma means like okay, the good activities and vikarma means it is the bad activities, the reverse of karma. And akarma means that which is neither good nor bad, which is what a devotee engages in. A devotee engages in karma. So when we are when we are engaging in devotional activities, then through those devotional activities, we are cutting the chain of this karma. So, in our uh, in our last session, we were talking about like how we can get freed from all our past karmas. And whenever one, so Krishna gives this promise. Krishna says, "Sarva dharma parityaja, mam ekam sharanam raja." Aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshayashami masucha. Sarva dharma parityaja means Krishna is giving an instruction to Arjun. Abandon all types of activities. And maam ekam sharanam rajam. Ekam means one. 
and surrender to one person and who is that mom me surrender to me okay and ma ekam sharanam raja and then what will i do aham tvam i will what i will do to you this is papebhyo moksha shram i will complete your all account of all sinful reactions i will take away everything of those now you will say are i have done all the sinful activities how will krishna take it is it really possible what does this mean <laughs> what am i signing up for and krishna is saying ma sucha that means do not fear krishna is giving the assurance there i will take care of that so when we when we say right that mercy means that which we do not deserve so this this mercy uh, when we offer something to the lord as let's say we want to give lord like okay i i made this biryani for you or i made this pasta for you okay and we are offering it to lord it it is called as bhoga that is it is for enjoyment of lord okay when we say with three times hari krishna maha mantra we say then we offer it krishna please accept it this is all i could make it i don't know much of cooking i say this prayer i don't know much of this cooking please accept this some more other accept <laughs> please some more accepted what can i offer you what is my value and what is the value of these things are you are the proprietor of this entire creation what can i offer you so many are offering you so many things they are offering you niceness and what is my value zero i am a, i am a negative if i have to rate myself well also i am a negative minus 100 quality cook so in this in this case what can i after all offer you but please accept this i have brought this out of love for you so so then when we take it back after 10 minutes then that becomes prasad and prasad means mercy mercy means whatever is required for us right krishna gives us that he puts his all love in that okay and and he, he krishna he is transcendental he is spiritual he can eat but it can still be there for us if he eats of everything and he, everything is gone then we <laughs> say okay krishna everything is gone what do i get but krishna can eat with his eyes he can eat with any of his limbs and he spiritualizes that food that way the mercy is imparted into that so slowly gradually what happens by chanting by following this abcd rule one comes out of the cycle of this karma okay and within this karma also the prarabdha karma that we discussed in the last session i would really encourage everyone to look through that because that has the key of how we can get out of this cycle of birth and death because the every time that we take birth we have to undergo miserable conditions it is guaranteed see right now also if you see the world if you look at florida what is happening florida is okay it's still bad but look at what is happening in uh, in the in israel iran at gaza what is happening do we have a choice where we get born we don't <laughs> we don't when slowly if you see like 50 years back 50 years now into this if you see the quality of people the selfishness is pe- in people is increasing the quality of the consciousness is slowly degrading and that means the kali everything is becoming kaliarist kali means quarrel and hypocrisy everywhere it is getting in so so does that answer your question prabhu vatsal prabhu yes prabhu thank you <laughs> hari krishna i see there is one more question from michael if we teach the kids about breaking their karma and don't give them money when they perpetuate their bad karma despite our teachings are we giving our highest value uh michael prabhu can you explain this like i am just trying to understand this if we teach the kids if you can unmute and share once again teach the kids about break <clears throat> thank you thank you prabhu. uh it, if we are teaching our kids about the laws of karma huh. and that from the time that they are young that they are in a karmic cycle huh. 
and we let them know, hey, if you are not aware of this, you will grow up to be out of control, lack consciousness, lack self-awareness, and you will place yourself in a position where you will need money and resources because you didn't do the right things with your own money and resources. And then they ask us for money and we say, but no, I'm not going to give you money because I warned you, we warned you as a, as a culture about karma and you refuse to listen. And we say, no, you're not getting any money. We are not then perpetuating bad karma by not helping somebody, are we? We, we are doing the right thing by restricting this money, aren't we? So, so when you say we are not giving them the money because they are misusing it, is that what you're saying? Yes, because they are misusing it or because they are not nice to us as parents and they didn't listen to our advice about karma, about saving resources and money and, and doing things the correct way. And then we say, okay, now you want money, but you haven't been nice to me. You don't call me. Uh, I'm not going to help you because financially, I'm not going to help you because I must teach you this lesson about karma by showing you how you run uh, perpetuating bad karma. Is, is that a good thing that we are doing? For our karma? So, so that is, I remembered one example that I was thinking when Vatsal Prabhu asked this question, I forgot to mention that. I think that becomes very relevant here. Uh, see, it is, Krishna is orchestrating that and since I missed that out, he said, and bringing out that same topic actually. So, um, let's, let's understand this. So, what we should do is uh, we should understand that whatever family members that Krishna has given, uh, whatever family members, what we have got is something that Krishna has given us. As our role, we should think that, okay, our role is to serve everyone, whoever are there. Now, some people may treat us badly in this even though we are giving their our best to them, they may treat us badly. Okay, And we should understand that we are getting a result of our bad karma. If we do not retaliate to that, okay, then we are being, being purified to this. Having said that, as parents, it is our, as a service, it is our duty to discipline our children. But we should, we can explain them the laws of karma, but as parents, we should do what we think as parents would be right to serve this child. Okay. And we should not think about their karmas, like, okay, that, okay, they have not done this, like, okay. This. But if we think that, okay, yeah, if I give him the money, I give him $20 every week and he uses it to smoke or to go ahead and use it for something which is not appropriate for his age then we should restrict that as parents and that would be the right service because and we should pray to Krishna that Krishna you have given me this child I am trying to do the best service to him but somehow or other I need help we should in in most cases what we should do and our scriptures also say is that okay for us and for whom we are serving we should seek guidance and uh, it should be taken on case to case basis like how we should approach that based on the principles of the Bhagavad Gita. So when we apply these principles, the principles, see sometimes some of these rules may be generic, but when it comes to actual case-to-case -case basis, we'll have to see how to apply this. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to we don't want to end up in a situation where we are promoting someone who becomes a um, revolting child. And our our objective should be that how we can become instrument of the love that Krishna is giving us. I will tell my case, like 35 years of my life, I lived eating meat. 
Okay. I have eaten meat like for 35 years. I did not know about any of these things. I have killed so many children of Krishna because Krishna is Aham Bija Prajapita. He is the seed giving father of so many living entities. But still I feel that Krishna has been so compassionate, kind to me. He is allowing me still to get so much mercy. So with that what I understand is that okay, the Supreme Lord is his utmost forgiving. So somewhere or the other, but if I have to become as forgiving as him, can I become like that? No. Because, and so that is why we have to pray that, okay, please bless me, that, okay, please give me your mercy so that I can become forgiving. Okay. I can give your love despite like, the difficulties because when we give excess of love, right? By excess of love, I don't mean like we dump them with a lot of gifts and everything. By excess of love means like by being concerned, by caring for others. Through that, what happens is the life of even someone who, who has been misled changes because we are trying to distribute the love of Krishna. And all this has to happen with prayers, guidance, then things start changing. And I have seen that in my life. Does that help Prabhu? I want to give one more example like to this, which I was thinking when, when Vatsal Prabhu also asked this question. See, in this karma also, one thing we have to understand, uh, this is very relatable to what Vatsal Prabhu was asking. And somewhere you can also relate to this, Michael Prabhu. That is, uh, in this laws of karma, right? See, when one takes this devotional path, he is not bound by the laws of karma. He or she is not bound by the laws of karma. This is the most amazing thing. And uh, if, and the, Wonderful thing is, at every point of time, we have to understand that a person has a choice. How we can understand this? Look at the airlines example. If we are traveling by flight, United Airlines, from Detroit to New York, okay, we have chosen the ticket, we are getting into this flight. So in this flight, we are in this flight. But within the flight, so we might think, okay, oh, I have to go to New York only. That is my this, this thing. But while we are on our way to New York, I have a choice what I will eat. I have a choice what I will drink. Would I eat a meat or would I have like, okay, something which is not, which is cruelty free? Would I, would I drink something like, okay, which is alcoholic or would I have something which which is non-alcoholic. I have a choice to read books or I have a choice to sleep across in the flight. Uh, and similarly, okay, I have a choice like, okay, whether I want to talk to anyone who is around, okay, give him some positive messages that I learned or I have a choice to talk about politics and blaspheme all the people like whom, whomever I have come across. So all these choices we have while we are in our journey, and that is why, okay, and what happens is, okay, when, when we are, we are, we may be, when we are in our journey in our life, right, there may be some situations where we have no choices, where we are completely struggling with, but there are situations where we have an independence to make certain choices. And when we invest our time, our energy to bring in Krishna into every space of our life, it will happen slowly, but as we keep doing that, what will happen is our lives guaranteed are going to transform 100%. And as time passes, we will see how this changes every equation in our life. Does that help, Prabhu? And Vatsal Prabhu, does that help? Absolutely, Prabhu. Thank you for a fantastic discourse. Hare Krishna. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. And does that help Michael Prabhu? Yes, very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So I know we ran much over time, but if anyone has any final thoughts or any comments or any feedback, any anything you want to share, please do let please do share the same and then we can close it. If no one has anything, then we can close it.
anyone any final thoughts or any any question nandini priya mataji wanted to share something no just uh, thank you thank you for the sessions prabhu ji and all the stories related to fear yeah like like mind one it was so nice prabhu ji thank hey. you so much prabhu thank you very much all glories to shri prabhupad jagat krishna prabhupad ki jai wish you all a very very fantastic week ahead and my sincere prayers for all of you at the lotus feet of patita pavan gornitai most merciful shri radha kunj vihari whose flowers our michael prabhu is carrying always and uh, our adosh darshi means the one who does not see any faults that personality jagannath baladev subhadra and our and our guru parampara please have a very wonderful week and see you next week hare krishna